So in this video, we're going to talk more about the matrix element uh, that we've been dragging around, including why on earth we call it a matrix element. So I've been writing it as the inner product of psi1 uh, with x times psi2. This is our dipole matrix element, or what we've been calling the dipole matrix element. Um, and the reason, first of all, it's called a matrix element is because of these indices, so 1 and 2. Uh, or what these were meant to represent is we've got some two-level system with energy E2 and energy E1, and this has a wave function associated with it, psi2 and psi1. And so this gives sort of the overlap or the strength of interaction uh, between psi2 and psi1. But you might say, well, Jordan, now we know that uh, we're not actually going to be dealing with just two energy levels. We're going to be dealing with entire energy bands. So we've got a conduction band up here and our valence band down here. So why, why do you keep writing psi 1 and psi 2? Um, well, the answer is that in general, we're assuming that, uh, so say we've got our two energy levels that are going to be interacting here, so E2 and E1. We're assuming that this uh, the wave function at this energy level is exactly the same as the wave function at this energy level and this energy level and this one and so on and so on. And so we're sort of assuming that this is not a function, uh, so not a function of the energy or the momentum, uh, so the energy or the momentum that we're dealing with. So we can just treat it as a constant. So we can just treat this as some physical constant that we have to calculate. And so now, what's the actual value for this? So what is just the number or the equation that describes this dipole matrix element? Uh, and the answer is that you can, um, you can figure this out using something called k.p theory, uh, or this is the most common way to figure it out. And I don't actually know how to do this myself, but uh, we, we might have future, future videos on it at some point. Um, and you can calculate this. Uh, using this theory, and you'll find that the answer uh, is equal to this energy parameter called EP uh, divided by 6 times the free electron mass times the frequency of your light or the angular frequency of your light omega L squared. So this is our, this is the long awaited uh, value for psi, this dipole matrix element. And EP uh, is typically around 20 to 25 electron volts. It's a material dependent, uh, it's a material dependent parameter. And so now we're finally ready to actually get some numbers for our absorption spectra. So if we plug this value in for the magnitude of the matrix element squared, um, we can write out a new, uh, a new form of our absorption coefficient alpha. And, uh, after doing a bunch of algebra, you can get that it's just equal to pi times q squared times eta naught, the impedance of free space, times h bar, whew, this is getting to be quite a mess, uh, times EP divided by 6 times the material refractive index times the electron free mass. And then all of this, I'm just going to lump into this single parameter called AP, which is going to be a material dependent parameter, uh, which is going to depend on the energy uh, parameter EP and the refractive index of the material. And this all has units, uh, this all has units of area uh, times energy squared. So that's why I'm calling it AP, because it's got an area in it. Um, and then this is multiplied by our reduced density of states, which is a function of the photon energy, divided by our photon energy. And so if we just make this substitution, uh, we have now that alpha as a function of the photon energy is just equal to this parameter, material dependent parameter AP uh, times the density of states as a function of photon energy divided by the photon energy. And so the beauty of this is that all of our sort of material dependence is here and sort of in the density of states because the density of states has an effective mass term in here. But all of the photon energy dependence is just carried in this term. And so if we were to plot this out, we, we don't even know what, uh, we don't even need to know what AP is uh, to generate a plot of this. So we can predict what the absorption spectra looks like. So the density of states, uh, let's plot the reduced density of states as a function of the photon energy. We know that up to the band gap, 
uh, our density of states is just going to be zero. And then it's going to start to look like this square root function. So it's going to go like the square root of the photon energy minus the band gap. And so if we draw the absorption uh, as a function of the photon energy on the same curve, it's going to look almost exactly the same. Its units are going to be different, um, except it's going to have a one over uh, the photon energy in the denominator. So it's going to look uh, sort of different. It's going to sort of get squished a little bit compared to the density of states. But it's going to be proportional to uh, E photon minus EG divided by E photon. Or very close to the band edge, it's just roughly going to be uh, proportional to E photon minus EG. Oh, and this should be E photon, not EP. And you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, shouldn't it just be 1 over the square root of E photon? But uh, no, because we've got an offset in this square root. So this denominator is actually in some ways, uh, we'll say, less important uh, than, the, than the square root in the numerator, at least very close to the band gap. So in the next video, we're going to calculate some examples. So we're going to try to predict what the absorption is at various energies. So maybe E1, E2, E3. Um, and this will give you a sense of the orders of magnitude involved, as well as giving you a chance to actually plug in uh, numbers to this, this awful looking equation, or at least this awful looking single parameter. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I should also mention as one last aside that this uh, matrix element goes by many names. So you might see it written as MB squared or MB squared or have it see it called the transition matrix element or maybe just M squared. Uh, so it goes by many different names. You might also see it written uh, as E dot PCV squared. And these all represent a slightly different thing from what we've been dealing with. So we've been dealing with the dipole matrix element, uh, psi1, x, psi2. These guys all deal with the momentum matrix element. So psi1 times p, psi2, uh, where p is i h bar times partial derivative with respect to x. Or in vectorial notation, oh, uh, in vectorial notation, uh, p is going to be equal to i h bar uh, times nabla or del. And E in this case just refers to the polarization. Uh, so the polarization of the incoming light, which we assumed was in the x direction. And we also assumed that we were interested only in the x direction. So we sort of took this dot product uh, to be one. But there's there's many different ways to represent this uh, this matrix element, but they're all sort of describing the same thing. It's uh, fundamentally about an interaction strength. So an interaction strength uh, between wave functions in the conduction band, which we've been calling psi2, and the valence band, which we've been calling psi1. Uh, but this might you might also see this written as psi c uh, or psi v. And if you're already familiar with optoelectronics, you might be asking, where's the envelope wave function? Um, but don't worry, we'll we'll get to that. Uh, that's that's going to be for a future video. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, also feel free to post those down below. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.